Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Congratulations. Uh, tomorrow is the start of the Great Lent. It's a very exciting time in the church calendar. And the church in its wisdom picked some very beautiful passages for us to meditate on uh, every week. And this Sunday um, is called the Preparation Sunday. And because the gospel is from Matthew chapter 6, and it teaches us about three things that we should do during this Lenten season that are very important. Those three things are charitable deeds, charitable deeds, prayer, and fasting. And if you were to determine sort of the common thread or the pattern that was in the, the passage or in Christ's message um, to, the, to, to his audience, I think the theme would be about receiving glory from men. How to receive glory from men. For example, concerning charitable deeds, listen to what the Lord says. He says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men, to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. But when you do a charitable deed, how should you do it? You should not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Then if you look about what the Lord says about prayer, the same thing. He says, For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, what should you do? Go to your secret room, into your room, and shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And the last one, fasting. Whenever, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But, but you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will, will reward you openly. So one of the common themes is how to receive the glory from men, that you do not be seen by men. And so today I'd like to talk about the praise of men. The praise of men. One of the things I want to talk about the praise of men is that the praise of men could be very different than the praise of God. The praise of man could be very different than the praise of God. What do I mean by that? It means God does not care about the praise. He doesn't care. Like I hate to say I don't care, but He doesn't care about the praise of men. Khalas. Like zero. For instance, I was thinking about when there was an occasion when King Herod was standing before the crowd and giving a big speech, and the people were so excited by his speech that they praised him so much. And they said, the words, the voice of God and not a man. What a praise for such a great king. Or, you know, like what? Oh, the voice of God and not a man. And then guess what? The next moment... You know what happened to this king? I won't send you across. Uh, so God destroyed him. Like, it it. The praise of God is different, like, is incompatible sometimes with the praise of men. The, the people, the, the, the men are praising, and God had a different idea about, about the, this person, about this situation. The point here is that society could be praising someone and God could be condemning that person at the same time. So we don't follow what society, the praise of society. Or we don't follow who society is praising. In John chapter 5, there's a story about a paralytic man who, was, uh, who got healed. And after, and he did this healing on the Sabbath day. And afterward, the Lord Jesus Christ is having a little dialogue with the Pharisees. And one of the things he said to the Pharisees, he said, How can you believe? Hear this. How can you believe 
who receive honor from one another, you receive honor from one another, and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God. It means you're praising each other, you're praising each other, doing all these stuff, but you're not listening to what God wants. You're not listening to the praise of God. And I think I'm going to talk about this part a little bit later on, but the, idea, the first point is that the praise, of God, or the praise of men means nothing to the praise, of, the praise of God. The second thing about the praise of men is that the praise of man is temporary. The praise of man is temporary. And we shouldn't depend on the praise of men. Be careful that some people might depend on the praise of men. And that's not good. You don't need to depend on the praise of men. I'm not saying you shouldn't praise people. I didn't say that. You should say very nice things to everyone. But you shouldn't depend on the praise of people. Why? Because the same people that could praise you one day, guess what? The next day, they might criticize you. They might say some things. And if you're dependent upon the praise of men, then it might be very difficult for you when things turn the other way. So you shouldn't be dependent on the praise of men. You know, I was thinking about on Palm Sunday, the people are screaming, Hosanna, the Savior. Five days later, the Lord Jesus Christ is being crucified. And they're saying, crucify Him, away with Him. The praise of men is temporary, it's fleeting. It goes this way, it goes that way. That's why the Desert Fathers, there's a beautiful story in the story of St. Macarius, that when he gave an exercise or to say to someone to go to the, the graveyard and praise the dead. And so he went and he praised the dead and came back and said to his master, huh? what was the point of that? That was silly. And then he said, go now curse the dead. So he went back and cursed the dead. And then he came back and said, that was also silly. Like nothing, nothing happened. I praised, I cursed, nothing happened. He said, you should be like that. If you wish to be saved, if you wish to be saved, be dead like the dead. Neither think, think neither of insults from men nor of human glory. I think the second thing about the praise of men is that it's wishy-washy. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's... The third thing about the praise of men is that be careful, the praise of men can alter your decisions. The praise of men can alter your decisions, like peer pressure, because you want to conform to some way of that people are doing things, and you want to, you, you enjoy the praise of men, so you will start to behave differently. Like Pontius Pilate, we were talking about the away with him. I feel like Pontius Pilate, he knew that the Lord was innocent, but because he was worried about the tension and the politics and how he was going to perceive, and they said, you are not a friend of Caesar. If you do this, you are no friend of Caesar. So he was so eager to please the people, and he was so eager to please the people more than to please God, so he changed his actions. Be careful that the praise of men doesn't change your actions, the way you dress, the way you do what you say, what you do, how you think. Don't let the praise of men change your actions. It's very dangerous. Lastly, I would like to say the praise of men sometimes is... We get the praise of men sometimes for achievement. So I want to talk about achievement. Because I think all of us want to achieve, but I think we need to think about what achievement is. I think uh, at the funeral of uh, Tosoni Nadja, Abu Namoro said some very nice words about achievement and how we're always trying to mark people by their, their achievements. Because sometimes in our effort to, like, you know, to achieve, we achieve for the wrong reasons, for the praise of men. And this is what was written in the, the gospel, they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So sometimes we start to categorize people by their worldly achievements. People who achieve more, the people that have more accolades, the people that have more wealth, the people that are in higher positions, 
or um, whatever reason, like stars or celebrities, we put them in a separate category. And sometimes that group then like sucks our attention and we only focus in on that type of, those type of people. And I think that's very dangerous, very dangerous because if you only focus in on those type of people, then you might miss out on an opportunity to see Christ. For example, St. Anthony took the advice of a sinful woman to go into the, to the desert. If St. Anthony had in his mind, I'm only going to listen to the ones that dress in black and the, you know, the clergy or whatever, he would have missed an opportunity to hear the voice of God. Someone who's only obsessed with worldly achievement or whatever, maybe not, will not have any concern for the poor or the less fortunate. And you know in Matthew 25 it says, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did to the one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. This is one of the things maybe I learned in, in Egypt this past trip, is that sometimes like the biggest lessons I learned on this past trip in Egypt came from actually the laborers. Like we were sitting having Bible study, and the way this like person who's uneducated, who, you know, can barely read, but his meditation on, we were reading the book of Jonah, and the life of Jonah, and the way Jonah affected his life, whew, better than any PhD, theologian, whatever. It was unbelievable. And here's just a simple man that doesn't dress in black. He's a laborer. He works and putting bricks and, and stuff. But he gave the best explanation of Jonah and obeying God ever. If you categorize people in their only achievements and I, only learn, I can't learn from people like this, then you're going to miss out on many opportunities to see God. And if that categorization of people was bad, there's something even worse. <laughs> that sometimes people are motivated to do something because of that, cater cateriza ca uh, that characterization. That characterization. And so the characterization like, is, is a problem. Let me give you an example to... like. Like, and I'm going to pick on doctors, but I can because my wife's a doctor. So, uh, but let's, uh, so no offense to any of the doctors here. But doctors are very well respected, and we admire them, and that's very good, and that's amazing. But it's dangerous that people could be motivated to become doctors just for that reason, and not because they want to help, they don't have interest in medicine, they don't have interest in helping other people. They just have this idea of doctors that they are, you know, the pinnacle of whatever, they make a nice sound. What? It, why? Why? You're searching, you're doing something for the praise of men. You're doing something for the praise of men. You're not doing it for the glory of God. That's very dangerous. That's very, very dangerous. And it's the type of per person seeking validation from people and seeking the praise of men. And it's very unchristian. So I hope we don't encourage unchristian ideas like that. It's very unchristian. I don't like that idea at all. You do what's pleasing to God. Whether it's, it could be being a janitor is very pleasing to God. Or being a, a doctor is very pleasing to God. Actually, anything that you do as a sacrifice to God, is pleasing to God. And you should offer everything that you do as a sacrifice to God. But let me also be very clear, I'm not against achievement. Actually, the parable of the talents tells us that we should multiply our talents. You, there should be achievement. But you do the achievement for the glory of God. You don't do the achievement for the praise of Man, that's a very. That's why the Lord said, "Let, like the Lord said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven." But here He says, "Do not let your charitable deeds be to be seen. Don't do them to be seen by men." You see the distinction there. Our achievements 
have to be pleasing to God. That's why Solomon, how many books in the Bible or chapters in the Bible talk about Solomon's achievements? So many. Solomon achieved everything. He had so many. I'll read you some of the things he said about himself. He said, I accomplished great things. I built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I planted gardens and orchards and all kinds of trees. I dug ponds and irrigated them. I bought slaves. And there were many slaves from every different part of the country. I owned more livestock than anyone. Anyone. What an achievement, Solomon. I piled up silver and gold from the royal treasuries of the land I rule. Men and women sang to entertain me, and I had all the women a man could want. Yes, I was great, greater than anyone else who ever lived in Jerusalem, and my wisdom never failed me. Anything I wanted, I got. I did not deny myself any pleasure. I was proud of everything I had worked for, and all this was my reward. Then I thought about all that I had done and how I had worked so hard doing it, and indeed all was vanity grasping for the wind. You could get all the achievement in the world, you could do all the things in the world, you could do everything, but all of it in the end, if it is not pleasing to God, it is it's vanity. It's all vanity. That's why the psalmist, he says, unless the Lord builds the house, huh? unless the Lord builds the house, those who have labored, they've labored in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who have labored have labored in vain. You know, I was touched this, uh, this week by the story of St. Damiana. St. Damiana, when her father achieved something, when her father achieved something big, became a ruler of whatever, and the father came back to St. Damiana, what did St. Damiana say to, to her, uh, her father? He said, she said to her, What is it that I heard about you? I would have preferred to hear about your death. Because St. Damiana's father renounced Christ to achieve. So achievement by itself is very bad. He said, I would have preferred to he she said, I would have preferred to hear about your death rather than to hear that you have renounced your faith and forsaken the God who created you from non-existence into being to worship gods made by hands. Take note that if you do not return to your first faith and renounce the worship of stones, you are not my father and I am not your daughter. Ouch. But that's someone who sees achievement the right way. That's someone who sees that if achievement is not consistent with God's will, then it is not achievement. Actually, get away. I don't accept this achievement. And you might say, oh, well, that was because that was a sin. You know, because the father was sinning. Because he denied Christ. But what was the Lord speaking about today? Almsgiving. Prayer. Prayer and fasting. And he said, if you do even those things, even if you do good things for the praise of men, guess what? You have your reward. You have your reward. I think we need to be very careful this week of the praise of men. The praise of men means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. And if society praises people or does things, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's not consistent with the will of God. As we start Lent, let's take a moment to evaluate our intentions. Evaluate our intentions. Some people will say, I don't fast right, so I'm not going to. Wow, oh, fast. Good job. You don't fast right, so because you've evaluated your intentions, so I don't fast because I have the bad or wrong intentions, and fasting is supposed to be, so we say, I don't fast. No. You don't not fast, you purify your intention. Don't say, I have the wrong intention, I'm not going to fast. You say, purify my intention, and you fast. Doesn't mean you stop fasting, doesn't mean you stop doing charitable deeds. It means you purify your intention. So as we start the Lent, I hope each one can go into their prayer corner, into their secret place, and purify their intentions. And it should be a Lent full of charitable deeds, of prayer and fasting. And glory be to God forever. Amen.